Sound design. Yeah. All right, so can you use Smart with the internal microphone of your laptop? Well, it turns out that you can, and in today's video, we're gonna look at how useful that really is and how to set it up. So um, a couple of days ago, a new student asked me if I've ever tried using the internal microphone of my computer to use Smart, and I said, no, that's crazy. I never even thought about that. Have you tried it? And he said, no, I haven't tried it, but I've seen other people use it and it seems to work fine. He said he'd seen people use it in the field. So I was like, okay, I gotta try this. So uh, there's a, just a couple things to turn on. It's not actually that complicated. So uh, over here in input devices, I've enabled MacBook Pro microphone. And depending on what generation of MacBook Pro you have, you may need to plug in something, plug in the output to your uh, headphone jack on your computer before you start smart, otherwise this won't show up. Okay, so I plug that in, uh, plug the other end into the input of my uh, little studio monitor here. I've got that pointed at my computer and we can see that the microphone is working here already. Okay, so all I did then was name this Mac 1 so I can kind of keep track of that. The other thing that I turned on is this generator. I don't know if this was always here, but I just opened this up and, and it was here. So if this isn't available to you, then let me know, because I'm not sure if I turn this on at some point or it's always there. But you need that as well. And let's see, the output device is going to be external headphones. Over here in the measurement config, you're gonna create a new transfer function. And this is going to be measurement signal MacBook Pro microphone and reference signal generator, those two things that we just turned on. Now normally you can't choose a measurement signal and a reference signal from two different devices. It's in an advanced setting, so if you go to the options for your transfer function and you take a look at here at the bottom, advanced, allow multi-device transfer function. Now normally this is turned off um, and I think that's default because you can quickly run into clocking issues if you're taking an input from over here uh, and another input from over here and they may have different clock sources. Okay, so I turned that on and then I showed you these inputs already and then I think the last thing, oh, you'll have to turn that on first and then come over to measurement configurator and then you'll be able to select uh, a reference signal that is not from MacBook Pro. Okay, generator. And then it's just the signal generator and I selected external headphones. And let's first just see if that's working. Okay, it's working. And now let's head over to Spectrum. Let's see if this microphone is working. Seems like that's working, that's cool. Let's see if this generator is working. Oh, it's gotta be on. Cool, so I'm gonna turn on my generator, hit play on the measurement and we will see if it works. Cool. Now this is already set up from before because I've, I was playing around with this to see if it would actually work. Um, so some of the things I had to do were uh, adjusting the microphone input. And since there's no actual hardware to adjust over in system preferences, sound input, MacBook Pro microphone, then I had to play with this until I got it to the right level. So I was just playing with this and like watching these levels over here. Actually, I can show you. Um, and the other thing that I have to do a lot is to reset the internal delay, the delay locator. Um, and it seems as though, as especially when you're first starting this whole process up, that as the computer is sort of juggling its own internal memory, um, the, it also affects the buffer for the audio. I'm not sure how all that works, but I did notice that I often have to reset the delay locator here, but it looks like it's kind of stable now. So I'm zooming way in here, by the way. Um, this was really surprising to me. I mean, it's not pretty, but it's not unusable. I mean, we've all seen measurements that look this ugly taken out in the field. Um, yes, we can see that there's plenty of reflections here from like, you know, uh, the different monitors that I have around and the windows and just all the weird things in this room. 
Um, but we can also see some stuff happening here. I mean, we can see trends in the phase. We can see uh, trends in the magnitude. And so the next question I have is how different is this than like a regular microphone? So I'm not going to waste your time with switching over because I have to like change inputs and like change audio devices. But uh, I already took that measurement and it is right here. So when we look at these on top of each other, they're not crazy different, right? Kind of similar trends in the phase, um, similar trends in the magnitude. For me, it looks like the magnitude is, is the most different. Like we have, you know, peaks where the, before there were valleys and the um, coherence even has changed, I guess, because of the, not only the response of the microphone, but its position and, um, but they're not so crazy different. I wanted to try a quick compare now we can switch over and I can turn on the quick compare and then we can take another measurement and see how different those two measurements really are. Okay, so this was before and this is with the quick compare. And you can see that they're quite different, mostly around these areas where we had some deep valleys and now we have peaks. So the quick compare here just kind of helps us see how different these really are. So would I ever use this in the field? Probably not. I've never been in a situation where I don't have all of my stuff and no one else has anything. You know, even if I didn't have any of my stuff, someone else always has an audio interface in the computer and most people have some kind of an audio analyzer. It doesn't have to be smart. But I can see a situation where you're in a pinch, something's not working, uh, or you just want to get a measurement really fast. I suppose you could set this up, but I suppose if you didn't have an, uh, microphone and an audio interface, you could make this work and then you would just have to like use your computer as the microphone and like carry it around the venue or whatever. I don't know. It seems kind of crazy. Um, what I do like about it is, is that it is just another reason why there's no excuses for not getting started with learning the audio analyzer right away. You guys know that I'm a big fan of like trying to remove excuses for getting started and practicing and practicing at home. And so if you were thinking to yourself previously, well, I need to wait till I get the right audio interface and the right microphone. Well, now that's not true anymore because as you can see, you could get started practicing with this right away. Um, it doesn't matter that this is ugly. You can still look at this um, and do analysis and now move the laptop around and move the speaker around and still start getting used to looking at this data. So I'm curious if you have tried this. Have you even used it on a show in the field? I'd love to hear about that. Let me know. Thanks. Sound design. Yeah.